Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll take a look at the light tool in the Essentials group in Luminar AI. There's a lot of sliders and controls in this tool, so much so that I want to split it into two pieces. So this will be the light tool part one, and there'll be another video to talk about some of the advanced controls. We'll call that part two. Now the light tool is for your fundamentals, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows. We don't often need to open up the tool for those controls because of a lot of the AI powered tools like Enhance AI do a lot of that heavy lifting for us but there are still some things to know about in this tool if you need to make minor tweaks to what the AI tools are giving you I want you to know about them so let's go through the tool we'll look at the sliders this will be part one we'll go through the, like the first half of the light tool there'll be a separate video to talk about the advanced controls which are curves so let's get into it so the light tool is in the essentials group and we will focus on the first set of sliders and the blacks and whites area in this video. There'll be a second video to talk about the curves. So from top to bottom, let's run down the particular controls we have here. As expected, we have white balance and there are a variety of different choices for common white balance settings, as well as an eyedropper. So you can activate the eyedropper, pick something in the scene that should be white, like say this cloud right here and choose that and we'll see a temperature shift so you have control over the white balance. You have options for a profile. Now a profile is kind of like an initial interpretation of the raw image and Luminar Default does a good job for the most part and if you want to uh, experiment or audition other settings you just hover over them and you start to see changes in the screen there so there are a variety and they all mimic like your camera settings so whatever camera you have you probably have in camera profile so you can choose different ones and if you want to you can also load in custom ones and if you find one you're using often let's say vivid was really nice you select that you can set that as the default for your particular camera I'll stick with Luminar default on this one. Temperature and tint, these work like you'd expect. Warm or cool the image. And you can control a little bit of color cast. You got your magenta versus green shift. Exposure raises and lowers exposure. Smart contrast. This is a slider I want to point out. Notice it's not just contrast, it's smart contrast because it is intelligent. And the light tool, you should visit it with especially for your landscape photos but visit it and see if smart contrast has been set some templates set it others don't it's a very useful slider let me zero that out and we'll see before that smart change uh, smart contrast change and then after it is just a richer photo and I can push it reasonably far look at the more detail I'm getting in those hills and mountains so smart contrast is an important slider to know about in the light tool. We lastly have controls for highlights and shadows. We can push our highlights brighter or rein them in. Same thing with the shadows. You can darken shadows. You can open the shadows up. In the blacks and whites section, this is where you set the, the boundaries of your tones. What's considered pure black? What's considered pure white? When you're working with these, it's helpful to bring up the histogram. There is a histogram. It's hidden away. There is a histogram. If you right click on your image down at the bottom, you have a show histogram. That is also available in the view menu right down at the bottom, show histogram. Now the histogram is really small. It's kind of hard to see. I don't dispute that. I would like this to be a little bigger or resizable. But uh, as I hover over it, notice that a couple of triangles show up at the upper right and upper left corners. I'm going to click on each one. You'll see that said cold pixels and I hovered on that. It says hot pixels. If I click on those, they get a little bit brighter. That means it will show me if I'm clipping when I adjust black point and white point. I don't want to lose data. And honestly, Luminar AI works really, really hard to prevent you from clipping. It does a lot of work that you don't necessarily have to worry about these things but let's take the white point if I want to push the white point really far you'll see that histogram start to creep over to the right as well and I'm pushing this incredibly far and I'm seeing no clipping so you can really brighten up your whites and really deepen the blacks without losing the highlight and shadow detail so if you want a very punchy, very contrasty kind of scene, 
you have these controls here and just see if I can push this far enough. If I take exposure and start pushing that really far, ah, there we go. There's a little bit of clipping right there in the center. So I had to work really hard to make Luminar AI clip highlights in this case. So it's, uh, it's nice that the tool is you know, watching out for me and not letting me do something too drastic. Um, of course, if there's ever that scene you want to clip something, you'll have to work a little harder for it. You know, like, for example, the blacks and maybe deepening shadows. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to get there in this scene. But that's what the blacks and white sliders do. One more time, looking at the histogram here, as I push the white slider, you'll notice that the histogram is creeping over to the right edge, saying, you know, consider more things. I set my white point uh, closer to where the tones of my image are bumping up against the right edge. If I were to pull those white points back, if I had a clipping situation where the photo was very overexposed, we can pull that back. Same thing for the blacks. As I push the blacks toward the left, you'll see the left edge of the histogram creep down and more tones are being considered deeper, darker shadows. I can open that up and recover anything if it were clipped off at the left edge. As I push blacks to the right, we can see a space growing at the left edge of that histogram. Fewer things are being considered as pure black. So that is the light tool in Luminar AI. Now granted, many of these fundamental controls, exposure and contrast and shadows and highlights, those are all handled by AI powered tools like Enhance AI. But I think there's three key takeaways that I have for you for the light tool. Number one is the white balance picker. You have complete control over selecting exactly what should be considered white in your photo. If you're shooting with a color card, this is where you want to go. Grab that picker, choose that color card. You know you've got your white point or your white balance set properly. Uh, second thing is the profiles. You can have that initial interpretation of your raw data be different or load in your own custom camera profile if you have one. And third is smart contrast. Don't overlook that slider. If your photo feels a little bit dull, something's just, just missing, see if the template you've applied has made a change to smart contrast. And if it hasn't, try boosting it. And if it has, try boosting it more. And it's a really useful and intelligent slider. Hope you found it useful. Check out part two where you go into curves about the light tool. Link is in the show notes. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.